In the previous lessons, we covered some details of LSTM, and now we have a better understanding on why and how LSTM is much more suitable in deeper network. In this lesson, let's put this in practice and build a LSTM network in Tensorflow Keras. Let's go ahead. In Tensorflow, there are three built-in RNN layers. Um, that includes the Keras Layers RNN, Keras Layer LSTM, and also Keras Layer GLU. We, we haven't covered the GLU, which is actually a variant on LSTM, which is a simple version of the LSTM, but still, it can solve the vanishing gradients issue as well. But in this lesson, let's focus on the LSTM. What we are going to do is to import the sequential models and import the LSTM, of course, and also import the dense layers. And, uh, and the data set that we are going to use is, again, we are going to use the MNIST data set. That data set contains 60,000 trainings and also 10,000 tests, handwritten stitches in 10 classes. So what we are going to do is to predict the handwritten digits. Now, what we're going to do, of course, we want to, um, let's remove this one. What we are going to do is that we want to import the TensorFlow. We want to, um, we are going to, again, use the sequential models. What, what we're going to do is to import the sequential model, import the LNSTM, and import the dense layer as the output layer, and we import the MNIST dataset. And for the NumPy, because we need some we need some calculations, of course, we want to import the NumPy, and we want to visualize some of the results. So we're going to use the MapPotsly. Let's run this cell. The image from this dataset that, um, that contains uh, uh, 60,000 examples and also 10,000 Ten thousand example. One is for the one is for the training set, and the other one is for the testing set. The classes are completely mutually exclusive, and that means that in in a single image, you will only see one classes. And here are the classes um, in the data set that zero represent the zero, one represent the one, and so and so. Now let's import the. Training image, training labels, testing image, and also testing label. And we can, of course, to uh, and the first very very beginnings, we can of course prepare the data with um, with normalizations. The image are stored in twenty x and twenty x numpy pixel with a pixel value ranging from zero to two hundred fifty five. In that case, we want to normalize the, the pixels to make it between 0 and 1. So we are going to divide the test image and also the train image by 255. The labels that we mentioned here, we also wanted to put everything and start them into a list. So we also put them into a list Let's explore the data a little bit. For the shapes of the training data, training image, uh, we have these 60,000 uh, samples. Uh, each of them is 20x by 20x. And of course, we have 60,000 corresponding label. And for the testing image, we have 10,000 training samples, 20x by 20x pixel. And of course, we have their corresponding labels as well. Now let's print the values between these labels. That is between zero to a line, corresponding to these table or corresponding to these leads. And finally, let's take a look on the pixel and also the image. The pixel value range from 0 to 1, and you, you can see uh, here, say for example, 5, this is the image 5, 0, this is the image 0, and so and so. Now, let's build the model. 
the first things that we would like to do is to set up and also configure a sequential model. Just like what we mentioned, now we would like to apply the TensorFlow Keras layer LSTM as the input layer, as the first layer. And then the last layer is the dense layer, which is a densely connected or fully connected layers activated by the softmax up to um, with 10 neurons to predict to represent the 10, 10 classes that we have. So here you can see that we assign the models as a sequential model, as a sequential object, and then we add the first layer, that is LSTM, with hundreds neurons. The input shapes is 20x by 20x, um, that is aligned with, that is to align with the pixel, in, the input pixel, and then we add a dense layer with the 10 neurons that represents the 10 classes, and the activation that we, we're going to use if, is softmax. Now let's run this cell, and this is the complete architectures that we have. And here you can see that in the first layer, that is the LSTM layer, and then in the outputs layer, that is the dense layer, and the input output shapes, that is the hundred hundred neurons, and for the dense uh, for the for the LSTM. For the dense layers, we have the 10, 10, outputs, new, 10 outputs neurons representing the classes. Now we are ready, so we can compile the model. We compile it with the optimizers atoms, and of course we also use the loss functions that is sparse categorical cost entropy. And here we set the from logics equals to false because at the very last inputs, uh, at the at the last layers, we already provides the activations equals to softmax. So from logics, we can set it to false. And because uh, we are not going to use the one hot representations, so sparse categorical cost cost entropies can be used here. And the metrics that we're going to use is the accuracy. So we can compile the models. Now we are ready to train the models. And of course we want to store everything into the historical objects so that later on we can visualize the training process. And here we, we use the fit functions to fit the model with the image, training image, training labels, and we sell it with the 10 epoch as, a, as an exercise here. And for the validation data, of course we want to provides the text image and also text labels for the validations. Now let's train the model. Now we've completed the training and here you can see that after 10 epochs, with uh, slight modifications from RNNs to a RSTM, as the model trains, the loss and also accuracy matrix are improving. And you can see that the accuracy right here is up to 99%, and then the validation accuracy is also up to 99%. The improvement is, of course, mainly due to the fact that RSTM can help avoid the vanishing gradients problems and smooth the trainings. Now, let's take a look on the pods. And here you can see that uh, it's uh, uh, the, the, as the training goes, the, it, the, the accuracy in terms of the in terms of the testing and also in terms of the trainings are uh, improving. And finally, let's take a look on the testing laws and also testing accuracy. Here you can see that the test accuracy is up to ninety nine percent. Uh, in with the use of the RSTMs. And so you can see that RSTM can actually avoid the vanishing gradients problems and speed up the trainings. With the trainlet networks, we can also use it for uh, inference. Let's predict uh, 60 image. And against the correct predictions labels are blue and incorrect predictions label are red. 
the numbers here indicates the percentage that is the confidence. Um, here you can see that uh, seven, uh, hundred percent sure that is a seven, and of course two, and so and so. And it this one, this one is actually a five, but it actually predicts eight with a very high confidence, just like what we mentioned to be, mentioned before. Even though it has a very high confidence, it doesn't mean it uh, predicts it correctly. Now, once we have these models, we can also fit into the fit image into the models to. Um, for further predictions, let's uh, grab an image from the data set, say test image 50, um, and then let's take a look on this, um, that is, let's take a look on the shapes, that is 28 by 28, but because the Keras models are optimized to make inference, to make predictions on a batch, that is the collections of the sample. So here we have a single image. Therefore, we need to change it, change these like a like a batch, like a one sample batch. So in that case, we would like to use the NumPy's uh, expand dimensions to help us to insert a new axis um, to the to expand these arrays to make it like a batch. But of course, this batch only contains one sample in order for us to use the models for uh, to, to make the predictions. Now, if we put everything into these models, we use the model predicts, and then we put this image, um, we have the output, and then we try to uh, we try to get the maximum confidence, that is the highest confidence values, and to see which class it predicts. And it it comes out that the highest confidence is six, and the predicted class is a six as well. So let's visualize these results. And hundred percent sure that it's a six, and this is correct. So the model predicts these labels correctly. This is a very simple exercise to show you how we can implement our STM with the use of TensorFlow Keras. It comes to the end of this lessons and course about the recurrent neural network. Throughout all the courses so far, we have, we always use TensorFlow Keras sequential models. However, this is only one type of network topologies. In the next and final courses, we will introduce TensorFlow Keras functional API to see how we can build more complex architecture to solve more complicated problems. See you in the next videos. Bye-bye.